So in this problem, we're told that water is being poured into uh, a container. Yeah, I'm going to draw that here. And the container has a small leak. So water's coming into it and water's coming out of it. Now, the mass of the water is given as a function of time to us by uh, 5.00 times the variable t for time to the power of 0.8 minus 3 times t plus uh, 20. This is our formula for the mass with respect to time as water is pouring into the container and leaking out of it. Now, uh, uh, the question also specifies that m for mass, for the, for the function itself, is in the unit of grams, and the t is in the unit of seconds. Now, the first part of the problem is uh, at what time is the water mass the greatest? And it might seem obvious at first, like, oh, oh water is pouring out, water is leaking out. So it's just whatever the, time, whatever, uh, the mass is going to be right at the start. But keep in mind, we have water coming in to the container as well. So we have both an input source and an output source. So uh, the amount of water in the or the amount of water in the container is going to be much more variable than it slowly pours out over time. So how are we going to find out what its maximum mass is? Now this is where we're going to have to do a little bit of calculus, because we if we are looking for a formula that will tell us the rate of change of the mass in the container. Uh, then we'll have to take the derivative to get that, and we'll be able to use that derivative to optimize our results for the mass. So let's take the derivative of the mass with respect to time. So let's say uh, dm over dt. So now if you don't know calculus here, you might get stuck here, but uh, this is a pretty basic derivative. It's basically just using the power rule several times. So to use the power rule in this first term here, we'll take uh, 0.8, the power of the t, of the, the power of the variable we're taking the we're differentiating with respect to, and take 0.8 times the constant here. So 0.8 times 5 is going to be 4 uh, times t, and uh, we're also going to take the power and subtract 1 from that. So this power will then become uh, negative 0.2. Now let's do the same thing here. There's no exponent above the t, so we can imagine that it's just a 1. So it's going to be negative 3, and uh, again, if you imagine that we're subtracting the exponent of, the, of 1 by 1, then it becomes an exponent of 0. So this t just completely disappears then. And as for the 20 here, it's just a constant without a variable attached to it, so uh, that just disappears entirely. So now we have the, the derivative here. Uh, so now we have a formula for the rate of change of the mass in the container uh, with respect to time. So how is this going to help us find the time at which the water mass is the greatest? So once again, if you know a bit about basic calculus, like if you've taken a simple calculus one course, then you're probably familiar with the concept of optimization, where you're trying to find the extreme value of a function. You're trying to find the maximum or the minimum value. So to do that, we'll want to set this function equal to zero, because if we can find where the rate of change uh, becomes zero, that will tell us where the maximum or the minimum value for the mass is. Uh, so we'll go ahead and I'll, I'm going to go ahead and do some algebra here to isolate t, so we can find out what the time is at that point. All right, so here I've done some basic algebra to isolate t on its own. So first off, I added 3 to both sides, because if we know this side is going to be 0, then that means we can simply set 4t to the power of negative 0.2 equal to 3. Uh, that's how I got, did this step. Then I'm going to divide both sides by 4 to get this constant out of the way, this coefficient here. Uh, and then I'm going to use uh, simple algebra again to get the exponent out of the way here and attach it to that side. So now I have, have that the time... Uh, is going to be equal to uh, 3 over 4 to the power of negative 1 over 0.2. So if I just simply plug this into your calculator, 
then we find that this is a time value of about uh, 4.21 seconds. Now you might reasonably say, now wait a second, it's true that when you set the derivative to zero, that is how you optimize a function, but we don't necessarily know right away whether or not this is the maximum or the minimum value. And you can pretty easily check this if you were to take the second derivative of the mass, or in other words, if you were to take the derivative of uh, this here, uh, and you get a negative function, that means that the derivative here is uh, decreasing, which would tell us that, uh, the, that this is going to be the maximum value. And if you were to do that test, then you would find that that is correct. So we do know that this is going to be the maximum value of mass. So when, time, when the time is equal to 4.21 seconds, that is when the mass in the container is going to be at its greatest. Now, part B is pretty simple. Part B asks us to um, explain, uh, part B asks us to calculate what that greatest mass actually is. And to do that, we'll just take uh, the time value calculated and plug it into our formula up here. All right, so here I have plugged uh, the time value into the function here. And it's important to remember to make sure you're plugging the time value into the right function. Uh, it's easy to get confused and plug it into this formula instead. But uh, remember that uh, this, fo this formula, is the, this derivative, is the formula for the rate of change of mass with respect to time. But when the, formula, when the question's asking us to find the actual value for the mass, we'll want to use the original function we have up here. So here I have plugged in 4.21 for every single instance of t in that original function. And this will give us an answer of uh, 23.2 grams. That is our answer for part B. And again, make sure you have your units right. It's easy to think to yourself, oh, I want to answer this in terms of the SI units. But remember that the, function, that the for problem specifies that this is a function for the mass in grams. Now, part C asks us to, in kilograms per minute, find the rate of mass change at uh, various times. So part C specifically, where we're supposed to find the rate of change of mass when T is equal to 2.00 seconds. Now because this time the problem actually is asking for us to find the rate of change of mass, we will be plugging the value into our uh, uh, derivative here, into our formula for the rate of change of the mass. So I'm going to go ahead and plug that value in for the function right now. All right, so here I have plugged in uh, the 2.00 for time into the derivative function here, and it gave me a value of 0.48 grams per second. But keep in mind that the question asks for the answer in kilograms per minute. So doing a simple chain link conversion here, where again, I'm using 1,000 grams in a kilogram, and 60 seconds in a minute so to multiply those conversions by this value, we get an actual answer of about uh, 2.89 times 10 to the negative 2 uh, kilograms per minute. Now, part D is pretty similar. It's basically asking the exact same thing as part C, only now we are asked to use a time value of 5.00 seconds. So I'm going to write out that calculation as well. All right, so once again, I've plugged in the time value for five seconds into the formula here, as I wrote out, and we get negative 0.101 grams per second. Once again, I'm going to have to use the same conversions above to convert this from grams per second into kilograms per minute. And uh, the rate we get is negative 6.05 times 10 to the negative 3 uh, kilograms per minute. And that is our final answer for part D.